Coming up on Keys today. We find out what effect legal highs are having in our region. It look like, looks like Metrolink could arrive at the Trafford Centre, but how soon? And can a Manchester student raise enough to fund his Harry Potter spin-off? Good afternoon, welcome to Keys News. A recent Home Office report has revealed the growing number, prob the growing problem of legal highs. The substances have been designed to evade drug laws and have the potential to pose serious risks to public health and safety. Our reporter Toby Crine went to find out how this is affecting Greater Manchester. When some people think about Manchester, they think about football. Other people think about bands like the Smiths or the Stone Roses. But unfortunately, some people still think about drugs. Since the 90s, Manchester has been a popular stopgap on the UK drug scene. Not surprising then that the city has recently been named the legal high capital of Europe. By listing these drugs as not for human consumption, manufacturers managed to skate around the Misuse of Drugs Act. We recently spoke to Scott Rowlands, whose friend had died after taking a legal high on a night out in Manchester. I'm not sure what he was smoking. I just know it was one of them eclipse or something or other. I don't know what strength he was on. But uh, he passed out, banged his head, boom, that was it, heart attack. And he died for it at the hospital. Now we've just been inside one of Manchester's renowned head shops. We can get all sorts of things from drug taking paraphernalia to these things, legal highs. Now this stuff here is called Gogaine. It's basically marketed as a synthetic type of cocaine. Uh, there's things on this ingredients list, but you or I would not recognize what they are. Uh, if you can just see on the front of that package there, it says not for human consumption. Basically, this has things that are very, very close to normal cocaine, but it's been played around with so much that the effects are completely unknown. It's getting worse in class A's, like heroin and crack. In Manchester especially, is, is pretty bad for it. Uh, sometimes it's quite hard to determine whether someone's taken a legal high or other drugs because the effects are quite similar. So, Would you say they are um, as dangerous, if not more so, than illicit drugs that you can buy on the street? Uh, I mean, the only advice I could give is obviously just because something's deemed a legal high doesn't mean that it's, uh, it's any more dangerous. Um, all I'd say is the effects you know, can be quite severe and the, the, the way I've seen it, people, it's the same sort of risk that you'd have um, you know, with sort of not being aware of your surroundings and, and stuff that can leave you into more trouble, really. Though these new psychoactive substances, or legal highs, have been attributed to roughly 100, 150 deaths in 2012 in the UK, it's clear that other legal highs, such as alcohol, are far more dangerous, being linked to around 8,000. Illegal substances, such as heroin and cocaine, have been linked to over 10,000. No matter what, the evidence suggests that these will not be legal for far too long. Toby Crine, Keys News. Now, the Trafford Centre's earned the nickname the Traffic Centre in recent years, but could this soon be given the red light? Shoppers could soon be able to arrive by tram. Proposed plans include six new stops calling at Wharfside, the Imperial War Museum North, Trafford Park Village, Parkway, Event City and the Trafford Centre. This new £350 million project is pending funding and government approval, but could be built and running by 2020. 600 full-time jobs are about to go in Manchester as the City Council looks to save £59 million. A draft proposal shows young people, the elderly and the homeless will be hit the hardest. The majority of money will be taken from social care, which amounts to 70% of the Council's spending. 40 school crossing patrols will also be lost. Wiping 1.7 million from the youth budget, a 3.8 million withdrawal from the Troubled Families programme, as well as a cut of £3.4 million from voluntary group grants, which includes homeless shelters. Preparations have been underway all week for the Manchester Christmas market. Having begun in 1999 with a single site on St Anne's Square, the markets are now in their 16th year. They now feature over 300 stores across nine sites, with more than 100,000 people predicted to visit this weekend. Traditional favourites include Bavarian beer, mulled wine and German sausages. It's not a bad place to buy Christmas gifts either. The markets will be opened at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning with comedian Justin Morehouse, known to many as Young Kenny from Phoenix Nights. Now, there's still time to get your tweets into us about the Christmas markets. Are you excited for the opening or is it bar humbug for you? <laughs> At Keys News with your thoughts.
But first, our resident film buff, Tom, has the latest sci-fi release, Interstellar. Now, one of our viewers, Owen Richards, has tweeted in to say that this is definitely the best movie of the year. Be Would you agree that it's out of this world? Best movie of the year, Owen? Ooh, I don't quite <laughs> think so. For me, this wasn't all that stellar. Now, <laughs> this is the latest film by Christopher Nolan. It stars Matthew McConaughey as mm. Coop, the last astronaut on Earth who's tasked by... Michael Caine to go through a wormhole to find another Earth when our own begins to die. And Anne Hathaway's along for the ride. So that didn't sound too positive then. Did you not like it? It wasn't that I disliked it, because there were certainly a lot of things to like in this film, but the problem is that Nolan's beginning to get a bit self-indulgent. It's a three-hour film, and your bum is going to get numb during this. I'm going to be honest, the first hour could have gone for me. There's no film that can't lose 40 minutes, and that's where it should have gone in this film. That said, there are a lot of positives, though. Such as um, Matthew McConaughey himself, he's absolutely spellbinding on, on camera. He works really well, and the visuals that Nolan employs, I mean, they're audacious. Can you imagine what it would be like to look at time as if it was a room? Because wow. I couldn't until I'd seen this film. It was incredible. I can't, I can't explain it. But yeah, it's a good film, but it has real problems. And I think Nolan needs to address this, because I find more and more in his work, Inception, uh, the Dark Knight Rises, it's become, that, that self-indulgence is becoming a real problem for me, and I think other viewers are finding it as well. And how do you think this compares to Gravity, you know, a similar kind of film? Well, Gravity is a lot sim is very similar to this. I mean, they're both hard sci-fi. There's very little aliens blasting or anything like that in this. It's all sort of an exploration of concepts. So they are very similar, but Gravity for me was the better picture because it was focused. It knew what it was trying to do. There was no this is wandering and wide, it casts a wide net. Okay, well thanks a lot Tom. Now staying with films, the Harry Potter film franchise came to a spellbinding ending over three years ago, but one devout fan refuses to let go of the magic. Manchester mogul Cameron Cairn Duff homes to raise £40,000 to bring the Wizarding World back to life on the big screen. I caught up with him to find out what the film is all about. The story focuses around Charlie Fowler and he is a normal 16-year-old uh, wizard and he has been expelled from Hogwarts uh, for retaliating towards a couple of bullies, which uh, this is where our story begins and we actually start back in Manchester um, where you know, we now pick up on his life as a, as a wizard in the muggle world. What do you want from me? Mudblood is based on the Harry Potter series. Um, however, that's exactly what we didn't want to do, you know, and we love Harry Potter so much, and I think that's the hardest thing, is that people that don't quite understand the community and the fandom are a bit like, oh, well, you're just trying to, you know, rip off a Harry Potter film. That's absolutely not what we want. All we want to do is to build on a story which is so original in its own mind. You know, I mean, this is set 10 years after the Battle of Hogwarts, so, of course, the Wizarding World is totally different. We are not making a single penny from this venture we really are just doing it because we want to make a film that is going to be watched by millions of people now Ed Miliband's in the news again today insisting he's come out victorious from recent in-party turbulence but Rochdale's Labour MP Simon Danshuk is among his fiercest critics he says voters in Greater Manchester are losing faith in the party leader. A recent poll showed that only 13% 30 of the public think he's ready to be Prime Minister. We asked shoppers out in Pendleton for their views. I don't think he's the best leader Labour has had or will ever have, but he's the only one to take us through to something decent than what we've got now. Do it really? I don't really have any questions about his leadership. He's the leader. But we've had leaders before who haven't been particularly brilliant, and leaders there have been. So his position at the head of the party doesn't come into it. It's all about the party more than the individual, yeah. So it doesn't bother you that he's got No, an no, it could be him, Ed Miliband, it could be someone else, as long as the party's there and they're doing the right thing, yeah. I think he's a genuine guy. I think he's um, you know, an intelligent leader. But you've got to win. It's whoever, whichever party gets elected, needs to understand one thing. It's not for themselves, yeah? They've been elected for a reason, yeah? They've been elected by the people to provide them with the, with, with the provisions, yeah? Time for sport now. Jonathan's here with news of University Cup action. Thanks, Hannah. And there was plenty of action this week when the University of Salford men's football team faced the University of Central Lancaster. Jacob Steer has more. 
Central Lancaster took the lead early on, but it wasn't long before the home side responded, Costas Taiz poking home from close range after the ball dropped in the box from a free kick. Conceding an equaliser seemed to galvanise the UCLan side, who had a good chance saved before responding with two more goals of their own to leave a half-time score of 3-1. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Oh. The deficit left Salford with a mountain to climb in the second half, but were gifted a way back into the game as Central Lancaster conceded two late own goals to bring the score to 3 all. In the end, Salford's late flurry was to no avail as they were beaten 4-3 in a penalty shootout. There's plenty of non-league action to sink your teeth into this weekend. FC United of Manchester, Kers and Ashton and Trafford are all in action in the FA Trophy. In the Conference Premier, Aldringham hosts Grimsby, Chester at home to Gateshead and Macclesfield travel to Welling. In the Conference North, there are games for Staley Bridge, Hyde and Stockport. And in the Evo Stick Leagues, Aston United, Salford, Troylston and Mossley round off Manchester's non-league action. Now all this sport may seem hard to keep up to date with, but luckily we're launching a brand new feature on our website to help you with just that. Our sports correspondent, Lewis Smith, is here to tell us more. So Lewis, what does this feature involve? Well, obviously, when we talk about football in Manchester, everybody thinks of United and City, but there's a thriving non-league scene in the city as well. And what Sport Live is, is a feature on our website that conglomerates all the scores and action into one easy-to-read live blog. So we've got up-to-minute results on goals, red cards, fouls from across at least eight games across Manchester. So where's the pick of the action this weekend, then? It's an, yeah, it's an interesting one to think about that. I think for me... FC United host Buxton in the second qualifying round of the FA Trophy. Now this is a game that has added interest because the sides played each other a little over a week ago in Buxton and the game was a one-all draw. But FC United came from behind that game with 10 men to come back and claim a point in the league. So at United's home ground of Staley Bridge, anything could happen. They're coming off the back of a strong 4-0 win, but I think that game could have some added impetus for both sides. So we're expecting plenty of goals? I think there'll be goals. It's one of the things that the non-league is always good for is goals. Um, sometimes the defence is a bit questionable, so you do get some, some fantastic goals in the non-league. Um, Salford will be looking to come back off the back of a few bad defeats they've had. They were going strongly, but hopefully they'll come back with a win as well. Well, I certainly can't wait to log on, as I'm sure many other our viewers can as well. Back to you, Alex. Thanks, Jonathan. Now let's see if any of the weekend games will be affected by the weather. Over to David Taylor, who's outside with a forecast. Thanks guys. Well, after quite a dismal night in Salford last night with plenty of wind and rain, things were looking quite promising this morning, a lot drier. Unfortunately though, there is a large band of rain sweeping up from the southwest of the country and that's due to hit us in the next few hours or so. Looking at the skies here at Media City, it's probably going to be sooner rather than later. It is quite blustery as well, like you can see. Uh, fortunately though, temperatures are quite mild, around 12 Celsius. The outlook for Friday to Sunday is quite changeable. Those heavy rains and strong winds will continue throughout tomorrow and into Saturday but those showers will be more scattered over the weekend and sunny intervals should break things up quite nicely. The wind will die down towards the back end of the weekend and over the next few days it should be mild and frost free. Don't forget as well as delivering live news coverage twice a week you can also visit us online. Go to keysnews.net to find our latest reports, news and sport coverage. You can also stay updated through our Facebook page where you can comment, like or share any of our stories that you see today. Now, a few of our viewers have been in touch through Twitter about the Christmas markets opening tomorrow. Nicola tweeted us to say, got my countdown onto the markets, a highlight of Christmas. Looking forward to the delicious food and mulled wine. Yeah, another tweet from Samantha said, my favourite is the hog roast and, of course, the mulled wine. Tara said that she's definitely excited. Markets are one of the best parts of this time of year. My favourite tweet is from Laura, who said, never too soon after Halloween ends, there's always something to look forward to. Make sure to tweet us your pictures and thoughts of the markets this weekend. I don't think I've ever been to a Christmas market. I have. They're you good. Have. You need to go. You need yeah. to get into the festive spirit. I think I'm going to head down to the Manchester markets at some point in the next few weeks. Yeah. How long do they go on for? I think they go all the way until Christmas. Okay. So you can, you've got plenty of time. You can grab some mulled wine. I need to fit in panto as well. 
Mm -hmm. Well, that's all we have time for today. Don't forget to tune in on Tuesday at the same time, 1.30. In the meantime, you can check all the latest news stories on keysnews.net and follow us on Twitter at keysnews. Goodbye. Thank you.